Watch your crunch army, where are you at? What's going on guys, this is not your ordinary guy. This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, the guy who was born to motivate you to be great, to really like go after your dreams, to not settle in life. I want you guys to dream, I want you guys to have vision. I want it to be bigger than you can ever imagine because you know what, you gotta aim for the impossible, man. And I'm telling you, you're gonna get somewhere where you're gonna be like, wow, I can't believe I made it here. So while browsing the competitive Fortnite Reddit the other day, we saw a series of posts by highlighting the greatest plays from pro players like Saf, Mitro, and 72 Hours. Those were the days. And since, you know, we were so flooded by nostalgia, <laughs> it inspired us to create our own list of each pro player's best play ever. So consider this video one in a new series of videos featuring the best play from each pro player. If you want a fast and easy way to get better at Fortnite, guys, then look no further than ProGuys.com. All right, we got some of the best coaches in the world that are ready to help you improve super fast. Head on over. The link is in the description. Make sure to like and subscribe because when we get to a million, yo, we we're going to release a story about how your motivation guy made it to where I am today. You do not want to miss this story. It's going to really inspire you. Bunch of Crunch Army, it's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that Bunch of Crunch Army. Let's get it. Let's get this going. Starting off with Mongrel. Okay, I feel like we could have picked any of his historic clutches from the World Cup period, but none blew our minds as much as his zero build, two HP multi-kill comeback. No doubt, it's gotta be one of, like, if not, the greatest play ever. Quite a bit of time, so he's gonna try and load those ahead of time in case an engagement like this one shows up. Oh. Gets a light tap there with the pump shotgun. No more mats, though. That's why he couldn't actually fight for that, because he spent so much time reinforcing that. Does get the RPG just barely through the stairs. He's gonna make an edit down and now start pressuring. But remember, no mats, and another shot does not connect there. Does try. Did knock him all the way down. That Ooh. player falls. The fall damage down to four. He's got four HP. Oh, Catches Omer off guard. I'm the stink grenade, the though. He needs to get out. Oh, yes. He's still in it. Three builds left. Going yes. over the hill, though. He's going to have to utilize other players' structure at this point, reloading those rockets. He's still sitting on six shots between the two of them. Okay. It's not actually going over that hill. It's going to start going down. He actually needs to break a hole through so that he can continue this path down and get through cover. Yes, two. Barely. Two HP. Are you going to do this, Marvel? No way. No way can you survive in this situation. Jamming himself underneath the structure, he might actually, his head might have been poking through the floor. He's saying just ahead, no. just out of sight. Does the player see him? Yes, I, I don't know. think so. The drop in. Gets the shot off and gets the elimination. Mongrel literally putting on a clinic of why you need to pay attention what to what's going on. What is this, everybody? Are you kidding me? Just fell. Picks up three balls. Launch pad, he's gonna launch pad off. Oh my goodness, are you serious? 13 eliminations, there's still four players left, including him. Add it down! No way! Are you doing this right now, Mongrel? No way! Top three situation now. Gonna get the time for the, for the minis. Still needs to find two more. Not sure who he's fighting. It's Alec on high ground and then Zuer. He actually, Margo, took down every single player that we talked about earlier in the lobby. And now reloading the double RPG as well. Zuer's gonna go down in another one. Margo, are you Stop. kidding me? I'm there done. is no yo, way I'm, you just did that. All right, I, see you, yo, I gotta go. I'm out. <laughs> For real, are you kidding me right now? That's absolutely ridiculous. Moving on. All right, so one of the reasons the World Cup was so exciting was all of the new talent, man. Case in point, King, the Argentinian 13-year-old, put on a merciless show. And the moment we witnessed him encounter Tifu, one of North America's finest, we got to see just how incredible of a player King actually is. He'll make a move on the outside. He is in the shadow form still, and you can keep this by jumping oh, against the wall. That was not a good shadow bomb, I can tell you right now. Gotta be disappointed there. Big hit from above, down to 55 HP. Tifu, the edit from the outside, and he is eliminated by King. Well, Tifu, a very quiet start to today's World Cup competition. Here's that elimination on Tifu, a shot from above. A little bit of shield damage, but a big hit from the outside. Here's the heavy snipe to take that wall almost instantly. Very intelligent play there. Again, more impressive player, more aggressive players we've seen thus far. Now, Clix is a clutch master, and with so many jaw-dropping plays under his belt, we had a tough time picking a clip that we could have just called his greatest. But since we have to pick, we're gonna go with the time. He took big risks, landed huge shots, and won an FNCS match for his team. He's campfiring in the back of the zone. You have to kill that guy for the health. You have to kill him for the health. Nice. 
Yeah! Let's go! Oh, I'm the fucking go! best player in the world! Dude, Let's I'm like, go, oh, baby! Let's, let's do it! Oh, shit. Let's go. leave, baby! Woo! Good shit, Clay. Alright guys, so back in Season 7, Epic released arguably the most overpowered mythic weapon of all time, the Infinity Blade. <laughs> and with the major tournament scheduled only days later, no one really knew what kind of mayhem it would cause until we saw veteran player Psalm shred through bills like butter and nearly wipe the entire lobby. Eliminations, he probably found himself another one on the way here. He's gonna be diving into all these battles. Landshark just took out Poach in the he's feed. Just, he's just breaking it up though, he's not even really fighting players. Oh, this player's gonna get it. Oh, boy, there he is. Oh, that That's was a predator. No, you're not the predator, bud. He is. Psalm is a predator. Another one's gonna be right in front of him. Some defense coming through here, but what are you gonna be Cannot able to do when you're just cutting him. through the structures and Uzi falls to the infinity blade? There it is. See, he's looking to break the structures that are connecting these high ground players so he can pick up more elims too from the fall damage. Gonna get another one here. He's gonna be trapped inside of the storm though. Doesn't matter. He can jump anywhere he needs to be right now. Gets he another catches someone elimination. Else. He's on a killing spree. Oh my players. word! He has picked up eight one. eliminations, oh ten eliminations. It doesn't matter anymore. This is Psalm's world, and we are just merely living in it. Oh, the guy fell. That's They're number all just 11. Falling. Because he's creating so much carnage. He's, he's creating so one. much carnage. He got another one. Bizzle. The Infinity uh. Blade is too good. It's so powerful. He is jumping on every single player here, connecting. Does he need to build? Finally. It doesn't even matter. Finally, the carnage concludes. Psalm gets taken out only when six players decide to fire at him. And RPG was going to be his demise there. And of course, when it comes to Aiden, his battles against Nick Merckx and Tilted Towers were legendary. And while it might not be flashy, his fight against him at PAX West had us on the edges of our seats. Aiden made big brain decisions that day, and with a bit of luck on his side, he was able to claim Tilted Towers as his own. Nick hears that chest open. He knows exactly where Aiden is. Here comes the engagement again. So far, Aiden eliminated Nick back in game one, and Nick looking for vengeance right now. Trying to spray on down with the LMG. Aiden building walls. Nick in the engagement. The tag. The shield's now gone for Aiden. Nick with the advantage up to this point. He's got to push the agenda here. The crowd getting behind Nick Merckx. You hear the chant going out of the background. Nick has matched the build. Aiden with the high ground. Nick 132 HP. I believe Aiden has just a little bit less. But as I say that, you see Nick with a little bit of a grimace there as he gets tagged for 60. The 1v1. The quick block there. The battle of the century. Two of the best controller players in the world going at it. Aiden down to two health. He's gonna have to big shield here. Nick wants this fight. I can tell you he wants to tie this 1v1 battle up. Nick, I believe, is disengaging for the moment. I'm sure he heard that big shield, Lupo. And that might have been enough to scare him off. What comes to the chest to slurp? As the crowd knows just how good that'll be. That'll put him up to 77 HP as they just disengaged. They'll both live to see another day. Oh my goodness, Lupo. Players another this caliber, big shield. Are you kidding me? Round three. Round three. Nick Merckx versus Aiden. Two controller titans hanging out in Tilted Towers. Here's the thing, though. Nick has no shields. He basically needs Aiden to walk on into the double barrel and say hello. He's waiting. They are one pixel away. Aiden charges in. The spray. Oh. Aiden again at 20 HP. And this crowd erupts again. Look at the loot next to him, too. He are. So when it comes to Booga, obviously the World Cup winner is a gifted player with a ton of incredible moments to back up his elite status. But I'd be a fool not to pick the moment where millions of us got to win his talent so good, we knew that he'd be on the way to win the entire event. I'm talking about the game one ending, where Booga played it flawlessly and definitively, earned his victory royale. A player like this is going to make plays, sitting the edge of the storm. The box up, he's going for edit shots. Big hit. My gosh. On the outside, Booga picking up his sixth elimination. Creo, Rux, Booga all on the low ground. Bella EU, one all player, the top one player just shot with the height. It's still some up top. Still got it. 
Same floor as Creole. 1v1 up top, 2 1v1 on the bottom, stuck in the box. Big hits, back to back shots. Booga picking up another elimination. Booga is insane now. Almost going to be his game to win. We'll see here another one. Can he find the ninth elimination and the first victory royale? The World Cup solos. Dr. Lupo, it might be time soon. It might be time soon. Booga, Booga smiling. He's got the health advantage on Creo. Does. Folks, it might be time for the shockwave play. Booga could soar up into the sky. Go for it. Here it is. Shockwave to hide. Shots coming in. Buga. What a monster, the first victory royale. Coming up next, FaZe Bizzle, whose best play gotta be when he clutched up at the secret skirmish. Going into the final match, Bizzle was in third place, but with an incredible game, an amazing reactionary shot, he managed to scrape his way to the top and win his first ever major event. Germ, no surprise here, Bizzle in a wonderful position to potentially take this game. Not many materials left. Three of them so far. A quick little tag of the player above. No materials. He's got to drop on down. He's looking for the way to take as little fall damage as possible. He's made it to the low ground. He's skating around. Shot comes in. A limb for Bizzle. Turns on the player above. That's it. He dangled the floor. He hand cannoned the floor. Are you and the kidding player me? drops. Bizzle with the victory. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Bizzle, our secret skirmish champion. The victory at the end put him one point above Sev. The man continues to do it, Lupo. When it comes to NA East legends, Zex Rowe has had his fair share of astounding moments, but who can forget his ridiculous 1v3 in the trio's FNCS? The stars align with his play, and I don't think we're ever going to see a clutch as perfect as this one ever again. Backward goes down, Kalk goes down, it's all on the back of Zexro, and you can see, trying to not crouch, wants to avoid doing that. Is he able to find it? He gets tackled, but he gets sent down. Will he be able to get, get back? something? Pop a bandage! Pop a bandage! Zexro, pop a bandage! Son, please! Oh. Oh. Wait, don't forget, oh. he has the double eliminations for the side, but it's going to come through. Oh, he goes down. Oh, as he goes down, what is he? I'm getting a block away. This is all that good. Is I'm out of here. That, that, oh my. Very, oh my. very, very, very good. That was actually absurd. Right at the end, had the down going through, had the exact. Now, Tifu has had many amazing moments, right? But this one that immediately came to mind was when Bizzle, Dubs, and Booga were trying to grief him in trios. Tifu wasn't having any of it that day, and with some remarkable aim, he put them right in their place. That's just crazy. I'm getting contested. Are you? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the guy landing on you. Yeah, full Two, team. Three people landing on you. Full team. Full team. Full team. Jump it off. I don't know who this dumbass is. I need help. They're gonna push me. Can you guys Bizzle. get to me? Can you guys get to me? Yeah, you're all, I'm yeah. at fucking factories. I'm coming. Hit one 50 flush. Hit one 30 flush. One launch padded. Dog shit. You're fucking trash. Get the fuck out of my game. Suck my fucking dick, bitch. Lastly, what about Mr. Savage? Well, his final match of DreamHack Anaheim was so good, but based purely on impactfulness, Savage's best play has to be his World Cup Shadow Bomb clutch. For context, Shadow Bombs were a pretty new item back then, and not many people knew how to use them. But after casually killing, you know, two of Europe's best, Savage goes on to use them perfectly. And the clutch actually gives him enough points to qualify for the World Cup finals in New York. So yes, great. An 18 rocket grenade launcher. But, but Mr. now Savage finds a shot. Is the person who yeah. will make it work. He is so innovative. What? And he takes out me This is what I was talking about. No that way. matters. Sad Aqua! 
This game was stacked with players who were 100% in the running for qualification. He just took out Mitro and Aqua back to back, now top four. Folks, you might be witnessing live why Mr. Savage qualifies this week for a trip to the World Cup Finals in New York. I'm sorry for anything I said about the grenade launcher because <laughs> apparently he's using it perfectly and making me look like an idiot. Mr. Savage M. Building on up, 22 builds remaining. The spray comes in a 72 tag, another elimination. Now eight limbs this game. They've got to go up the side of a mountain Shadow and it's bomb. Shadow Bomb time. Look at how awkward this is. Out. He's getting completely blocked that out. He's deciding to take it storm damage. Yes. Mr. Savage! Oh, oh no my way. god! You did not! Oh my god! Oh my goodness! What a play! Are the you? best Shadow Bomb use I've ever seen! Mr. Savage M rising to the top of the mountain like his plane will when this freak of nature probably goes to New York. <laughs> All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's why your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Do you guys agree with our picks? Let me know in the comments and also tell us whose best moments you want to see next. If you enjoyed this, make sure to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. Bunch of crunch army, where you at? Keep eating that bunch of crunch and let's get this going.